Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and welcome to our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. I'm Andrew Womack and we have Julie Ann Harris here with us. And we haven't hosted, Julie Ann hadn't hosted me in a while, so we've been having a good time visiting and we're going to be sharing some things with you tonight that I think will really, really bless you. I ministered in Phoenix this last weekend on how to hear God's voice. And then I did a uh, live stream today for our foreign people that will be in a mul multiple different places. And I taught on that again. And anyway, I've just really been excited about how important it is to hear God's voice. And I'm going to share with you four basic ways of hearing God's voice. I think it'll really be a blessing. But I'm going to let Julianne tell you how you can be a part of this. And we'll take questions and we got meetings coming up and a giveaway and all kinds of Amen. stuff. Amen. Actually in Phoenix, you started out by saying there's five ways to hear his voice and then you got behind, huh? So it's down I to did. four. So I did. So I was down to four. Actually, I could name at least a dozen <laughs> yeah, that's ways. It. This is not a definitive thing. This is just Amen. four basic ways that God speaks to all of us. Amen. Well, let me get through these announcements right quick so we can dive right into the Word. So this is an interactive Bible study. So we want you to interact with us. How can you do that? Well, whatever forum you are watching on, we want you to go down to the chat section. And as you hear Andrew share this evening, you're going to have questions and we want those questions from you. Then about the last 10 to 15 minutes of this program, we're going to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. We are also interactive in the fact that if you want to be a part of these live Bible studies and a part of everything that Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College is doing across the globe, you can be a part of it simply by giving. So I would encourage you to consider becoming a partner or simply giving. And you can do that by going to awmi.net slash give. Also, what's really cool about Tuesday night is that we do a drawing for a free giveaway. So if you sign up for the Bible study notes, so this is how the Bible study notes go. You you sign up for it, you're going to go to awmi.net slash study. You're going to fill in your information. And then when you do that for the first time, you're entered into a drawing. And when you sign up for the Bible study notes, you will get notes from this evening's Bible study next week, Monday morning. So it's really awesome. And so uh, last week who won the drawing was Fran um, Converse. And we gave away He Healed Them All by Barry Bennett. So last week was really powerful. This week uh, you can enter to when the war is over. That's Amazing. a great book. It is a great book. Really good. Have you read that one? I've listened to it. Well, that's good. It's Same hot. Teaching. It's it, yeah. It's big on the love of God. I mean, mm -hmm. that's whoo, that's awesome. The war is over. So uh, sign up for the Bible study notes, and you can be entered in to win that drawing. Also, we got a lot of um, events coming up, and so I just want to touch on those right quick. We got Orlando GTC. We just got back from Phoenix, and so um, Andrew likes to go south in the winter. He's smart. Right. I kind of like it too. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. So we'll be in Orlando next month in February. That's February. 9th through the 11th. Then the next event that we have coming up is Men's Advance. So that'll be in March 9th through the 11th. And then after that is Campus Days. Campus Days is amazing, y'all. And we are doing so many amazing things this year at Campus Days. Uh, if you came to last year's, it was great. This year is going to be even better. It just gets better and better. That is going to be March 15th through the 17th. So I would encourage you, if you want more information on any of these events, go to awmi.net slash events and register and show up. That would be awesome. Let me look here. So we have, oh, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they are a wealth of knowledge. Andrew has over 200,000 hours. I was thinking about that this morning. And we've been saying that for about a year. Probably a lot more than that. <laughs> I was going to say. So either way, it's more than 200,000 hours of free material. That's just the free stuff on the website. And so if you're going through something, if you need prayer, I would encourage you, don't go through it alone. We have prayer ministers that want to be there for you. And so you can give them a call at 719 635 one, 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 one. And last but not least, I'm going to mention this week we are having spring registration here on campus. So if you have an inkling to go to Karis Bible College, uh, I can tell you personally, your life has the potential to be radically transformed. 
and that is because it's the Word of God. The Word of God is the only textbook that we have at Karis Bible College, and it's not too late for you to get started. Like, how long are you going to delay? So I would encourage you to check it out at karisbiblecollege.org or just come on to campus, and we'll get you signed up and started. So uh, I believe those are all my announcements, sir. And I've got an apology to make and a confession that uh -oh. last week, uh, you know, it was after uh, Christmas and New Year's, and I think it was last week. No, it was two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago. But anyway, I had my kids out, my granddaughter. We played games all Sunday and Monday, and I was thinking it was Monday instead of Tuesday. <laughs> And I just didn't show up. <laughs> and so my staff was here, and praise God, they played a repeat. But that's the first time I think in my life I have ever not shown up when I was scheduled to minister. So, well, we forgive you. Two weeks ago, if you were looking <laughs> and recognized that it wasn't a live Bible study, it was my fault. I apologize. But <laughs> praise God, I'm here tonight. Amen. So that's Redeemed. good. Redeemed. Yes, Forgiven. amen. Forgiven. So I want to talk to you about how to hear God's voice. And again, like I said, there's so many ways that God tries to speak to us. He loves us and He's trying to constantly speak to us. Most people think it's hard to hear God's voice, but it's really not. It's hard not to hear God's voice. Now that sounds like a uh, radical statement and a statement contrary to most people's experience, but that's because we harden our heart towards God. And I'm going to share some things with you that will really help you. But let me start here in uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, just talking about how important it is to have God reveal Himself to you. Because in Je Jeremiah chapter 10, the Apostle Paul, or excuse me, the Apostle, it wasn't New Testament, it was Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He had been prophesying destruction and judgment over the nation of Israel. And in the midst of it, he came to this thing where he said, how could this happen to the people who were so favored by God that at one time they were the apple of his eye? How could they come under judgment and go into captivity and all of these things happen? And he answers his own question here in Jeremiah 10, 23, by saying, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. So the reason that they were going into judgment was because they hadn't followed God. They had been doing it their own way. And you know, the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. The key to the Christian life is learning how to hear from God, how to be led by God and not do our own thing. Now, God has given us free will and we have the total freedom to do our own thing. God does not sovereignly control us and make anything happen, but the wise decision is to recognize that, God, I need your direction. So, that sets the, the table for how important is it to hear from God? It's absolutely essential. Amen. If you can't hear from God and be led by God, then I can say that that basically is why you've got in, whatever problem you've got, sickness, financial, emotional, relational problems, fear problems, depression, on and on you go, name anything. You're just one word from God away from having that problem solved. God has an answer for everything, but we've got to learn how to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. And so let me start over here in uh, John chapter 10. Jesus said in verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. And listen to this in verse 3. It says, And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth unto his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he uh, goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of um, strangers. You know, this is what Jesus said about us, and yet this is contrary to most of our experiences. You know, I'm not speaking only for myself. Have you ever had problems hearing the voice of God? <laughs> Once in a while, yeah. 
<laughs> because everything's so noisy. I, th I think that's that's that's, that's one part of, of it, and that's one of the things I teach in this. But yeah. anyway, the scripture says we hear His voice, and that we will not hear the voice of a stranger. And yet, most Christians could say, "I hear the voice of the stranger. I hear the voice of the flesh." But man, I have trouble hearing God. It's exactly opposite what God said. Not because God isn't speaking. God is talking to you and me every second of every day. There is never a decision that you have to make that God isn't speaking to you. And I believe that God also speaks to us about going out and doing things and touching people and being a blessing that many of us are just deaf unto. So God is speaking to us all the time. The problem isn't God speaking. The problem is our hearing. And so I just want to share with you, this is what I taught in Phoenix. I'm going to put out a brand new teaching on this. I thought it was really good. Did you enjoy that teaching? It was amazing. I yeah. put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I thought it was absolutely amazing. It was good. Yeah, yeah. And what I did, I, I've taught on how to hear God's voice. I've had a teaching out on that for over 25 years, but I organized it differently. And so I'm going to tell you about four things. First of all, you have a conscience that God has given us, and God speaks to us through our conscience. Now, that's not 100% reliable because you can have a defiled conscience. You can have a hardened conscience. Your conscience can be overactive. Mm -hmm. In my case, I was raised in religion that condemned me for everything, and I had a conscience that I was guilty about things I shouldn't have even been guilty about. But you can't ignore your conscience. It does exist, and if you ignore it, well, then it, it hardens your heart towards God. And I believe that this is the first line of defense. God talks to all of us through a conscience. The second thing I talked about is the importance of God's Word. And this is the foundation of everything else. The Word of God is the most important way that God speaks to us, and it is infallible. Your conscience can be defiled. You can sear your conscience with a hot iron, but God's Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you have to have the Word of God as a foundation in your life. The third way that God speaks to us, and these are, again, not the only way. There's multiple ways, but these are foundational ways. But when you get born again, you get a brand new spirit, and God speaks to you through your born again spirit. It's not third person. It's not from the outside in. And I think that this is what a lot of people are looking for. They're wanting an audible voice. They're wanting someone to call their name and say, Julianne, you go do this. But see, the Holy Spirit speaks to Julianne's born again spirit and reveals to her things. And she just comes up with, I want to do this. Yeah. And if you aren't careful, you'll miss that thinking, well, this is just me. You have to be able to discern, is this your carnal self, your natural self, or is it your born-again self speaking? And again, the Word of God enters into this mix because uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, the Word is quick, it means alive, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the Word of God will divide between what is of God, your spirit, and what is of your flesh. So you need those two combined. And then the last thing that I, I was going to talk about, and again, there's multiple other ways that God speaks to you, but through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you could go into all nine of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 14, but specifically talking about how that the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the gift of speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, it's your born-again spirit praying, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, and verse 13 says, if you pray in tongues, pray also that you interpret and you can literally interpret your tongue. It also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that when you are praying in a tongue, it's your, your spirit praying, and it says that you are praying the hidden wisdom of God. So you are praying these supernatural mysteries, but it doesn't do you any good if you don't know what you're saying. So you need to ask for an interpretation. So these four are, are four basic ways that God speaks to us. And if you just try and use one, to hear from God, you can miss God. You need to merge all of these things together. For instance, I had a woman that was in one of our Bible studies in, or in my Bible school, and this woman constantly criticized me and said that I was word bound. 
and said that I was just locked into the Word and I didn't let the Holy Spirit speak to me, which is not what I believe at all, but that's what she believed. And she would always just pray and get a word from God and get a dream and she would just be led by the Spirit. And it didn't matter if it contradicted the Word or whatever. She was just into quote unquote the Spirit. And so she came to me one time and said that she had had a dream. And in this dream, uh, she saw me landing on the beaches of Normandy and there were landmines all over the beach. And she said she saw me with the map and I was looking and this map had where each one of the mines were so that I could avoid all of the explosions. But she was just listening to the Spirit and having the Spirit say, go forward two steps and write one step and then things like that. And she said it was so much better to listen to the Spirit. <laughs> but you know what she was saying actually to me was a great illustration that how do you know that what you're hearing is accurate? Are you exactly. willing to base your life on it? Did you know that there's multiple voices out there? And if you're just going to go by, you feel this impression in this voice, how do you know that that's not the devil? How do you know it's not your flesh? How do you know that you weren't influenced by what somebody else said? How do you know it's your spirit? The way you know is because your spirit will never disagree with the written Word of God. The Holy Spirit wrote this written Word of God. The Holy Spirit breathed it, inspired it. And so there is complete agreement. And so this word picture that she gave, this dream, is actually awesome. Because if you have a map, how do you know you're reading the map properly? Well, you depend on this voice, the Spirit, to confirm the Word and make it come alive to you. So it's not you just reading a map and possibly making a mistake, but when you combine the two, when you take the Word of God and what it says and depend upon the Holy Spirit to quicken it to you and give you revelation, knowledge, and understanding of it, you put those two things together and I guarantee you, you have a confidence that God is speaking to you that you wouldn't have otherwise. So again, I'm just going through this real quickly, but let me say this, that if you don't have a understanding of the Word of God, you are going to really, really, really limit God speaking to you. And I know that that's discouraging to some people. They say, this is a big book. Man, I don't understand the King James. You know, you don't have to read the King James. I was brought up on it. It's not a problem to me. I can understand the means you. It's, <laughs> I'm smart enough to figure that out. It's not a big deal. Actually, it blesses me because like I was teaching today out of Luke chapter 16, I, I did a biblical worldview thing and it says, you know, it used the word mammon and that doesn't mean a thing to us. And so it makes me go look it up and see what does this really mean. And, and because the King James uses some words that aren't just so easy to understand, it makes me think about it. Amen. So I personally like it. Like for instance, an example in uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 23 well, verses 22 and 23, it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And when you get to the word temperance, all of the modern translations say self-control, mm -hmm. which temperance is self-control. So it's not 100% wrong, but if you look the word temperance up in the Greek, it literally means self-control in food and drink. This is why that when they had the prohibition movement, they called it a temperance movement because it is specifically denoting controlling yourself, self-controlling what you eat and drink. And I tell you what, gluttony is the Christian sin that so many Christians just overindulge and bulge as a result. And it's accepted, <laughs> but the scripture says that a fruit of the Spirit is self-control. See, you lose something when you try and it define things Amen. in such a narrow way that you lose some of the nuances of those words. So anyway, I like the King James and it <laughs> ministers to me. But you need to have these different layers of God speaking to you. And if you could get like all four of these things I talked about to where your conscience, the Word, your born again spirit, and then the gifts of the Spirit, if all four of those things line up and say the same things, boy, you have a level of certainty, assurance that you are hearing from God that you wouldn't have if you went by just one. 
For instance, I've had people before, I heard a story about a guy that he wanted God to speak to him. And so he said, oh God, speak to him. And he just opened the Bible and put his finger on a verse. And it said, Judas went and hung himself. Oh no. <laughs> and so he says, I, I must not be God. So he flipped over to another verse and he tried it again. And it says, go and do thou likewise. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you know you can make some serious mistakes with that kind of Bible interpretation. But if you read the scripture and then depend upon the Holy Spirit to quicken it to you and give you understanding of it, you put those things together and then if the Holy Spirit confirms it, like for instance, you go to pray and in tongues and say, Father, here's what I feel I'm supposed to do. Would you confirm this? And so you pray in tongues. The Bible says when you pray in tongues, it's your spirit praying, the part of you that has the mind of Christ, the part of you that according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, has an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. And so if you are praying in tongues and asking for an interpretation and all of a sudden you begin to get revelation and you see how this is going to work. So you put the gifts of the Spirit, the born again Spirit being in union with the Holy Spirit, the, the uh, uh, foundational truth of the Word of God, you put those three together and you've got a level of certainty that you could never have if you're just waiting on you know, a cat to walk this way and two dogs to walk that way. And that's going to be your sign <laughs> that God is moving in your... Matter of fact, we were talking before we went on the air about somebody who was praying about coming to school, but they needed a sign. Mm -hmm. and what was it they were asking? If they won the scholarship. Yeah, we drawing. offered a $500 yeah, scholarship. A <laughs> so they said, God, if you want me, then let me win that scholarship. And you know what? They did. <laughs> they did. So. And so God can speak to you that he way. He can. He can, but it's all by faith. Even when you say, sure, you, can, you have a sure word. If you have the mixture of that, it still ultimately comes down to faith. Absolutely. And, and what you notice is if you're not into the word, if you're not believing this stuff, um, a lot of people think that they can hear, like you said, they hear the devil. Well, the devil told me. They, it's like they have more faith in not hearing God than actually hearing God. Well, there's a lot of people that hear things that are at the very best just their flesh and at the very worst, it's demonic. It's true. And they go and get a divorce and divorce their mate and decide, I'll go get a new one. Yeah, that's and true. And that's not God. And there's others that'll sit there. and Like there's people today that are saying that they're Christians and God told them that homosexuality is fine. It's okay. That's yeah. not what the Word of God no, teaches. It's not. And so I don't care how strongly you feel. Some people say, but I feel so strong, so passionate about this. It doesn't matter. This is truth. Amen. That's the Bible says, John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus is the one who spoke this the night before his crucifixion. He was praying and he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. This word is truth. It's the plumb line you have to put everything with. And I don't care if you feel, boy, you just love this other person beside your mate. And you're passionate about it. And it doesn't matter how bad your situation is in your marriage, how much you love somebody else, quote unquote, love somebody else. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's not God. You know, this is one of the ways that you can see things today, that there are people saying that love is love. It doesn't matter if it's between two men, no. two women, or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's between an adult and a child. There are people saying that it doesn't matter if it's love between a, an, a person and an animal. Bestiality and having sex. Love is love. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That is not true. The scripture teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter four, uh, 13, it gives the characteristics of God's kind of love and it's not self-centered. It doesn't seek its own. It isn't easily provoked. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. God's word is truth. And anybody who says, but oh, this is love. I love this person, even though they're of the same sex, but uh, it's, it's love. That's contrary to the truth, the standard of truth, and your feelings are wrong. Amen. It doesn't matter what our society is saying. There is right and wrong. There is moral and there is immoral. Amen. And you've got to get to where the Word of God is absolute foundation. But the Word isn't going to tell you to necessarily go marry this person. It'll give you guidelines. It tells you not to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And so it gives you guidelines 
but it doesn't tell you this is the exact person you're supposed to marry. So you have to, it's like the Word of God provides you with boundaries, sidelines, parameters, and inside of there, you have to make decisions and choices, but you never choose outside of those parameters. If the Scripture tells you to not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, then don't do it. Amen. But then, even if they're a believer, are you equally yoked? You can even define it more and refine it more. And then you let the Holy Spirit bear witness. Like when I married Jamie, man, I knew that that was the most important decision I would ever make in my life outside of being born again. And so I entered it with fear and trembling. <laughs> and I remember praying Psalms chapter 5, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. And I said, God, I'm seeking you. If I lack wisdom, I'm asking of God, James chapter 1, and I believe that you are giving me wisdom. And I just sought God and prayed about it for weeks, and God kept confirming it and showing it, and it was within the parameters that the Word of God set. And so I went ahead and trusted God and made that decision. And I tell you, man, I am blessed. Amen. I don't think there's another woman on this planet that would have stuck with me through the things I put Jamie through. And so, uh, man, the Word of God is the foundation, but then your spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit and guides you that way. You can have supernatural direction through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's just a lot of other things. I haven't even taught on this, but the Scripture says, Psalms chapter 19, that the heavens declare the glory of God. Firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. So that right there shows you that God can speak to you through creation. Yeah. And then, of course, God can speak to you like He did through Balaam. He could talk through a donkey. He could have a dog come up and bark your name. He could part <laughs> the Red Sea. He could write your name in the sky. He could do signs. You can have dreams. I'm led by the Lord through dreams, I'd say probably every two weeks, uh, but certainly once a month, I get some major direction from God through dreams. Uh, God speaks to me all the time in dreams. So dreams, supernatural revelation, audible voice, vision, angels, there's just a lot of ways that God can speak to you. But if you are bypassing the Word and the witness of your spirit to try and go on to these other things, I don't believe you're going to hear from God. Why would God give us this that costs people their life? There's people that literally died to be able to translate the Bible and give it to us. And if you aren't going to honor this and take the written Word, the general will that is already revealed in the Word, well, then God isn't obligated to show you specific things if you aren't even honoring and taking advantage of the things that you've already got. This puts an importance on the Word of God. And again, this is why we do Bible studies. This is why we have Karis Bible College. This is why we have 200,000 hours of free material on the website. It's all about the Word of God. And I tell you, with all of the advantages we have today with website, digital things, uh, you know, just so many ways to access the Word of God, you do not have an excuse for not knowing the Word of God. There are reasons, but there isn't an excuse we can get into the Word of God. Amen. That's powerful. You receive that? I receive that, absolutely. And I love how you got to balance that out. That's what I learned in Bible school is, because you can read something in the Word, but it's in the mouth of two or three, let all things be established. That's right. That's what And the that will keep says. you from going off track, right? Deuteronomy 19, you have to have two or three witnesses before anything is established. Amen. Jesus even did that. Yep. He even said that. That's what he said. Wow. Very good. Yeah. You're learning. I'm learning. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so we got some great questions. Let's jump right into it. Um, I wanted you to expound on this because you just talked about it. Asabe on YouTube says, does God direct us through dreams? Are all dreams from God? And could no. you explain? Because there's a, there's a whole sector out there of dream interpretation and stuff like that. There's a lot of dreams that came from what you ate. Oh. Pizza. Pizza? <laughs> Pizza dreams. <laughs> you know, I have, like I say, if I was to go to sleep right now in five minutes, I'd have three or four different dreams. I just, I, my mind is working so much when I'm asleep that I can't tell if I'm awake or asleep unless it goes off like you're running in sand and getting nowhere, something that you just can <laughs> tell is totally not reality at all. 
So I dream all of the time, and I wouldn't know how, what percentage, but there's a small percentage that is God speaking to me. But I have God speak to me probably once every two weeks, certainly once a month, things that have been major revelations to me. And lots of times when I'm meditating on a scripture and trying to understand it, when I go to sleep and I get my mind to where it is not dominant and controlling, then my spirit will take over and I, I see things explained through dreams. Wow. So um, anyway, there is a whole interpretation of dreams. The only thing I would say is that over in um, Genesis chapter 40, and uh, 41, where Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dreams and he interpreted the butler and the baker's dream. Mm -hmm. He said that because the dreams were, in, uh, were spoken unto you twice, it was the same dream, same point, but it was two different ways of making it. He said that that means it's fixed. It cannot be changed. So when you have the same point being made in a dream twice, that means it's established. It's not going to be changed. If you have a dream and say, for instance, Satan tries to kill you or something, uh, that could be a warning for you to take evasive action and deal with it so that that dream doesn't come to pass. So um, anyway, there's a lot I could say about dreams, but I'm not spending a lot of time on that because if you truly have God speak to you in a dream, you know it. You know it, yeah. You don't have to search. No, and if you're having to, if you're having to strain, matter, I have some dreams that I think might be God speaking to me, but I just can't seem to grasp it. And so what I'll do is say, Father, if that's you, explain it to me, confirm it to me. And if he does, fine. If he doesn't, I just let it go. So I never dream. What would you say about that? Jamie never dreams, so really? she says. So, oh, but, you don't believe her? No, because I hear her dream. Oh. <laughs> you, everybody dreams. I've heard people say that. Really? You dream, you just aren't aware of it. But Jamie, Jamie just, uh, I think it was last week, she was talking in her sleep and doing <laughs> something. And she was. I've gotten out of where when she does that, I'll wake her up. Oh, you because will? Because if I wake her up and say, what was that about? Then she'll remember it. Uh, but if I let her continue to sleep in the morning, she has no recollection that she said anything. Wow. wow. And it's usually really like she's going... I mean, it's always good. She, she's going, I rebuke you in the name oh, of really? Jesus. Yes, she's binding <laughs> things. And, and then she, she bound this. And then she goes, hallelujah. And I mean, her dreams are good. <laughs> but she has them. You have them. You just don't remember them. I don't know exactly why that is. You don't know why that is. Carrie Pickett's the same as I am. She as you are, right. That's like why I'm that. like, is there something wrong with us that don't no, remember? No, I don't think no? there's anything wrong. It's, I, don't, I don't know what the reason for that is. Okay. Old man dream dreams, but I've been having uh, dreams since said, I was a young man. Oh. I, when I was a kid, I had dreams all the time. So I think it's prophetic. I honestly don't know exactly why. Interesting. Okay, so uh, Charmaine on uh, chat roll says, it is hard to suppress the flesh through fasting, uh, quieting the mind daily, and taking time listening to God. So how can you say it is not hard? Let me say it this way. It's hard when you first start because we are so tuned in to the world and to the flesh. And so, yes, to make the transition is hard. But if your mind is stayed upon the Lord, if you are seeking God with all of your heart, it's not hard to hear God. It really isn't. And let me give you this example. Uh, uh, Julianne mentioned something about, you know, how all of the noise from the other things drowned out the voice of God. And I was in Washington, D.C. back a number of years ago, and I was walking on the mall, and, you know, it's uh, gravel. And as I was walking on this gravel, I just remember having the thought, it just came to me, that how come I can't hear my steps? Yeah. Because you can normally hear yourself when you're walking on gravel. But honestly, I listened and I couldn't hear a single step that I was making. And I, it just registered with me. I didn't come to a conclusion, but I just noticed it. And then right after we left Washington, D.C., we went to uh, Shenandoah National Forest and I went walking on the Appalachian Trail and there was nobody out there. It was totally quiet. And every step that I took, you could nearly hear it echo. <laughs> it was so loud. And I just remember thinking, why is this so loud? And in D.C., it was, I couldn't even hear my steps. 
And it was because in D.C. you had cars, traffic, you had thousands of people, you had tour groups talking, they were on megaphones. Uh, <laughs> you know, you just had everything. And there was so much ambient noise around that it drowned out those steps. And it's the same thing. In the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, the Lord appeared unto uh, Elijah, not in a wind, not in a fire, not in an earthquake, but in a still, small voice. And this is how God speaks to us. He doesn't yell at us. Now, He can, and there are some times that in rebuke or maybe it's just such a serious situation that He'll overcome your flesh, and He can speak to you in dramatic ways that you can't miss. But that is not His uh, dominant way of doing it. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God could speak to us in a way that it wouldn't take faith that none of us would ever miss it, that I mean you would hear the voice of God. He could, impre he could force you to hear Him, but there wouldn't be any faith involved in that. And so God speaks in a still, small voice predominantly. I've never heard an audible voice from God. I've never seen a vision with my physical eyes. I see it with my heart, but I've never had any of those external dramatic things. And yet I've had God speak to me tens of thousands of times. He speaks to me all of the time in that still, small voice. And if you unplug from the world, and if all you do is seek God with your whole heart, then it's exactly as Jesus said, that you hear the voice of the shepherd and you do not hear the voice of a stranger. Mm. I've actually had people come up to me and say, how is it that you hear God speak to you? The devil told me I'm never going to hear the voice of God. And the devil said this and the devil said that. And they can hear the devil without any problems at all, <laughs> but they can't hear God. That's because you are on the same frequency as the devil. It's like a radio. You are tuned to his station and you aren't tuned to God's station. And I'm not saying this to hurt anybody, but I'm saying this is the way most of us were raised. Think about our little kids today that are having drag queens come into kindergarten and show that transgenderism and homosexuality is normal and they are coming against everything that is mor moral. And if you're brought up that way and if that's what you've been taught and if that's the voice that you're listening to, well then yes, you're going to have a hard time hearing the voice of God. But if you're an adult, you can choose to shut out the things of the world. Turn off the television, all except the gospel truth. Amen. Amen. Leave that on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, you start, you know, go to our website, like Julianne was saying, 200,000 hours of teaching on this. I guarantee you, if you just saturate yourself, plunge yourself into seeking God with your whole heart, then it's exactly as I said. It is actually hard not to hear from God. You will hear from God. God will begin to direct your steps. It says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I think that's uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. So if you aren't having God direct you and hearing his voice, it's because you aren't acknowledging him in all of your ways. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean you're terrible, but it does mean that you're occupied with the things of this world and it's drowning out that still small voice. Amen. I think too people, people view prayer as something that you have to like get in a certain posture, be in a certain place. And to me, acknowledging God in all your ways is just that, is that prayer. That's prayer, right? Of like, hey God. Absolutely. Man, I'm not sure what to do right here. Or it's just that continual conversation all day long. There are times that I will lock myself away and I'll pray in tongues or pray in English right. for an hour or two at a time. There are some days that I'll fast and I'll separate myself and spend the whole day praying. But the, I'd say 99% of all of my prayer life is just every day I am constantly keeping my mind stayed on the Lord. Amen. I'm studying scripture, asking him to speak to me. And then when I'm driving down the road, I'm praying, God, what does that scripture mean? How do you want me to apply this? What do you want me to do? Amen. So I'm just, I'm praying without ceasing. I pray all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. So you just mentioned Proverbs uh, chapter three, verse six, and Prev 92 on, on YouTube asks, so will God teach you and guide you in practical earthly things like losing weight at 61 years old? Absolutely. Matter of fact, it was about, I couldn't tell you the exact time, but I would say 15 years ago, possibly 20 years ago, that I was 35 pounds 
heavier than I am now. And I had tried to lose weight and I was praying and saying, oh God, this is, this is not self-control, it's right. not temperance. Right. And I said, what is my problem? And I was eating with a woman that was sitting across the table from me and I was having a salad, which I really wanted a steak or something <laughs> and fries, Amen. but yes. I was trying to discipline yes. myself. And she was <laughs> eating chicken fried steak with gravy and French fries. And she was skinny as a rail. What? And I just said something about this isn't fair. I said, man, you eat all of this and here I am eating rabbit food and you are skinny and I'm not. And she says, I've lost 160 pounds. And I said, eating like that? And she says, yeah. And she says, I've got a series, nine teachings that uh, go into how you lose weight. And I said, give it to me. So she gave me this series and I had nine hours worth of driving from Midland, Texas back up to Colorado. And I prayed and I said, God, I need a word and I just need to know what my problem is. And so I put that uh, CD in and in 45 seconds, I had my answer. Because she started by saying that Weight is not a problem. It's a symptom of the problem. It's something else that is causing you to have weight. And in her case, it was a comfort food. That's how she comforted herself. That's when she was stressed out, she'd go eat and stuff. That's not my problem. But as soon as she said that, the Lord spoke to me and he says, your problem is you're glutton. Oh. I just love food. <laughs> I love food. And I like fattening food. <laughs> And uh, I mean, the Lord told me that was a problem. And when I saw that, I said, I can, I can sit there and refuse to eat. And so what I did from that time on, I just started, I, I kept eating candy. I kept having desserts. I haven't quit a single thing, which I think that, I think diets, you know, three fourths of that word it's is diet. diet. It's horrible. And yeah. that's the reason that you can't do it. And it actually does damage to your body if you go through extreme things. And then as soon as you're off, you go back to eating mm. the way you were. It's yo-yo dieting actually does damage to you. So what I just decided was that I'm not going to be a glutton. A glutton is a person that eats more than they need more often than they need it. And so you can deal with it by increasing your exercise and therefore you need more food mm -hmm. or you can decrease your food. And what I did from that day, I went on my way home, I stopped and got a sandwich, I ate half of the sandwich and threw the other half away. And people say, well, that's wasteful. Well, it's either going to go to W-A-I-S-T or it's going to go to W-A-S-T-E, <laughs> one of the way. And like some people may... Waste waste. But you know, <laughs> it, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was more important that I lose weight. And so I just started eating half of anything that I did. And then I increased my exercise and I've lost 35 pounds in uh, 15 or 20 years and have kept it off. I had something happen to me this year where I decreased my walking. I went from five and a half miles a day down to about three miles a day because I hurt myself and it just took a while to build back up. I'm just now getting back up to five miles a day and I gained back seven pounds just because I decreased my calorie needs and I kept eating the same way. Gotcha. So I started decreasing my eating and now I'm increasing my exercise again and I'll be back where I need to be in about a month or so. So the key ultimately comes back to hearing the voice of God. You well, heard yeah, from God, God, God spoke you were a glutton. To me. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of skinny gluttons. <laughs> They just have high metabolism. You could yeah. still be a glutton and not be necessarily overweight. Interesting. It is It is interesting how that is like the acceptable Christian. Uh, but it's not. It's no. a person that is not controlling their weight. I guarantee you, you have a problem. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean God can't use you right. in any of those kind of things. But it is a problem and you ought to deal with it. Amen. Praise God. Uh, DJ on YouTube says, how do I have conversations with God? It seems one-sided when I talk to him. That's because you're doing a monologue. You know, it's like the old uh, <coughs> CD or CBs that we used to use and <laughs> you'd talk and then you'd say over and <laughs> you'd over let, now. you know, so <laughs> you need to every once in a while say over and <laughs> let God <laughs> talk to you. You know, you need, part of prayer is being still and not saying anything and just listening. Amen. God, what do you want to say? I actually had a friend, he was pastor of a church and I prayed with him a lot of times. We prayed together out loud. And he told me one time, he says, 
I PRAY HOURS A DAY AND I NEVER HEAR GOD SPEAK TO ME. BUT WHEN I'M OUT JOGGING OR WHEN I'M IN THE SHOWER IS WHEN GOD TALKS TO ME. HE SAYS, I CAN'T UNDERSTAND WHY HE NEVER TALKS TO ME WHEN I'M PRAYING. AND I SAID, I CAN UNDERSTAND BECAUSE I HEARD HIM PRAY. HE WAS A PENTECOSTAL AND HE WAS JUST LIKE A MACHINE GUN. FATHER, AND HE WOULD JUST brrr LIKE THIS AND FOR AN HOUR HE WOULDN'T TAKE A BREATH. HE WOULD JUST BLAST IT OUT. AND THAT'S NOT COMMUNION. THAT'S A MONOLOGUE. AND SO MY PRAYER HAS GOTTEN MORE TO WHERE 90% OF MY PRAYER IS, ALL, FATHER, I LOVE YOU. THANK YOU FOR THIS. THANK YOU FOR WHAT YOU'VE DONE IN MY LIFE. AND, and GIVE ME WISDOM. SHOW ME WHAT TO DO. BUT I SPEND A LOT OF TIME LISTENING, AND THAT'S PRAYER. YOU DON'T HAVE TO BE SPEAKING THE WHOLE TIME. MATTER OF FACT, uh, GOD CAN'T GET A WORD IN EDGEWISE SOMETIMES. SO YOU NEED TO QUIT TALKING SO MUCH AND LISTEN. AND AGAIN, WHEN I READ THE WORD, I'M NOT JUST USING MY MIND. I'M READING THE WORD WITH MY HEART AND I'M SAYING, FATHER, WHAT DOES THIS MEAN? SHOW ME SOMETHING. HOW DO I APPLY THIS TO MYSELF? I ASK QUESTIONS. QUESTIONS ARE A GREAT WAY TO HEAR FROM GOD. AND I'M CONSTANTLY SAYING, LORD, HOW DO I APPLY THIS? WHAT DOES THIS MEAN TO ME? SO I'M LISTENING. PART OF HAVING, HEARING GOD'S VOICE, YOU GOT TO LISTEN. AMEN. SO, Anyway, we've run out of time, and yeah. there's a lot more that amazing. we could say. Yes, it was so good. And make sure, give our prayer ministers a call if you need prayer or want more resources, 719-635-1111. And I do have an old series entitled How, How, How to Hear God's Voice. It's about 20-something years old, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be updating it in the next few weeks with the things we talked about here, and it'll be a real blessing. To Those me. are some of my favorite, because they come off the tape, and you're really high-pitched, and... Well, that's because when we were on cassette tape, they would uh, not always clean the roller the way that they should. Oh, really? And, and ferric, uh, uh, iron oxide would build up on the roller, and it would make it record slow, so when you played it back at the normal speed, it would be fast, and that made my voice <laughs> even higher than it it's was. It's pretty awesome. Those old teachings, I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise God. If I was God, I wouldn't have chosen me, but oh. he did, and I'm just glad that he did. Amen, right? It's, it's awesome. an honor, right? So thank you for being with us tonight. And again, if we can help you, we have people at our phones 24-7, and if you have questions, they can probably answer your question or point you to one of the teachings that I have. They would answer that, and I believe it would be a real help to you. Amen. So thank you for joining us. God bless you. Let, uh, remember that we do this every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We'd love to have you join us and praise God. Have a great time studying the Word of God and letting God speak to you. Amen. Bye. You were created with a purpose. Written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow him. You were designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. We want to help you to know God, experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.